The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, right, folks, you've got to consider that there is a chance that today we might be making a climactic volume low as uh, we'll see what happens in the on-balance volume if there's a sudden spike to the upside um, after the low was made. And this is going to be very important. Why? Because the Dow, uh, I've got the TBT up now, but we'll come back to that. Let me go through all the numbers. The Dow screamed. It just gapped out. It was up 300. The futures were up over 300 points earlier this morning. And then as... The the uh, P, uh, CPI a number came out this morning at 8:30. I let me just show you this very interesting thing right here. The let me go to the there it is the 10 minute chart um, had made a number had made a peak E earlier on the, uh, from the three something in the morning low that was made. We went to peak A, peak B, C, D, E, then it pulled back, made a lower low, and then started peak A, B, C. And then in the Chapman Wave uh, notations, it went to a D, popped up to an E at 8 o'clock, held very steady. This is the E mini futures in the 3630s, and then screams up to 3644.75 just moments before the uh, CPI data comes out at 830. And at peak F, it plummets. And it's also, you know, I've spoken about this often, and especially in my webinars, I talk about, uh, I have the Fibonacci extension, but I put in a 300%. I, I don't think there's a 300% in the actual Fib, but I put it in, 200 to 300%. And 300% so often is it goes to the extreme. I know Larry Pesavento always talks about 382, but that's usually a retracement. This is the expansion. So 300%, it pops just a tad over that, and then it plummets down from 36, this is the futures, 3644.75 to the low of 3502.00, a round number low. It's kind of hurting right now to look at it because I, I got in there at um, 35.15, and the platform I have for some reason, usually, usually it's just fabulous, but all of a sudden it started to so crazy numbers, uh, it just and I thought, oh my goodness, I've got my show coming up soon. I, I better, <laughs> I better just get out. So I got out, and here it is now, 35.52. It happens. That's the way it goes. We're at the 200 period moving average in the one minute chart. This is a fantastic move from the high to the low, and then back down, uh, and then sorry, high to the low, and then back up. And here we are, 35.53. Of course, that's all. That's 90 points lower than the high of the day. But right here, stalling at this 200 period moving average, leg D in the two minute chart. Fascinating market. Is this going to be? Now I can go straight to what I want you to do today. In any case, I, regardless of whether or not um, we didn't know whether the. All I was thinking of, and that's the reason why we have the Dow Diamonds, is that they had a fabulous rally from the uh, positions that we bought early yesterday to earlier this morning when they were rallying. And that's happened so many times lately over the last uh, week and a half or so, where intraday or intra even hour, you've got some really strong moves. And then all of a sudden, uh, it changes direction. And it's, if you were to short, where would you know where to short unless you were just very lucky to short just before the um, 8.30 announcement today? I, I do believe some people in the den said they, I believe they, they said they did. Um, and that was so spectacular, immediate, over 100 point just collapse. So now this is very important as far as I'm concerned. So the INDU, and that's the reason why for a long time I've been saying that the intermediate term, if there was a, if anyone has a short position from some time ago and is still holding it, Keep that as an intermediate term position because um, with a volatility index as it is in this high position, yes, we are really close to some kind of a market reversal. 
But you have to treat it as a counter trend rally. That's number one. That's my opinion. Number two is when the semiconductors, uh, I'll get out of that now. Let me go to the semiconductors. When the semiconductors go from 318.69 in January in this incredible arch formation to a uh, to the left side low, and this is the, the bar I was showing, I believe it was yesterday, this doji candle low, um, sorry, doji candle halfway marker of 184.61 in September of two, uh, September 2020, there's 184, let's just call it the 184s with the 163s as support, and my, my looking at this said, there's a chance that at some point, we could make a left side, right side price time match, and that would take you to about January to get down to the that 160, uh, 163 level. Well, it turns out that today's low was in the 166s. So um, we are very close to that, and of course, this is not. Uh, this is not. This is October. So um, and. When you're looking at the semiconductors, the damage that's done says, yes, at some point, just on a purely technical level, there should be a very strong rebound. Of course, a strong rebound could say, maybe we go back to, uh, what is this? Uh, so this is today's Thursday. Wednesday, Tuesday, Mon Monday's open of 187. That's 15 points. Well, it can happen, but it's going to take a lot. And you're ch in the, right in the Chapman Wave inside track, propellant zone, the very end of the support level in the semiconductors and the daily chart, the weekly chart still says you can go a lot lower. So this is a very important session because if by the end of the day we can garner at least uh, a, a rally back, it doesn't have to close positive, but very close to the um, closing level of yesterday. Let me show you something very interesting here. So I'll, I'll go to the VIX one more time. He has the VIX index. Now the VIX is index. And what is fascinating through this whole thing, the VIX has actually been down. It's under yesterday's high. And that high, if I you remember, I said yesterday we're going to be watching this closely because there's a chance that I'll need to do a vertical test. Uh, I'll do it now, but this isn't the real one because I have to wait at least another day or two. But the vertical test of the high of 34.88 around about the 29th or so of September. Uh, look, the MACD was strong. Stochastic was just over 80%. And uh, now the MACD is strong, but less so than it was on the uh, 28th. And the stochastic is at 76%. So you start to see the VIX index. And look at this with all the everything that's going on. Look at the volatility index and the Chapman Web Insight Track repellent zone it's back inside this repellent zone wouldn't you think that with the news today and the, and the dow just crashing 400 points the s p down uh, huge that the the vix index would be much much higher now nah, it hasn't worked that way so far so when friday's close comes if the vix index on a closing basis is actually under 3150 it's at 3259 right now that's going to hint that that repellent zone is working yet again, as it has done since the uh, February high of 37.79, which was under the January high. And that started the trend line to the downside. I'll be back. The Dow's down 170. Amazing. SP's down 31. Excellent action off the low. I'll be back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back and you're looking at the Dow 137 SPs down 28. Very, uh, very impressive comeback. What we are looking at is a question that came in about EQT, natural gas and hydrocarbon. Yes, it's holding quite well. It's at 43.01. One of the things that I, has kind of been a recent issue that is a little unusual at this particular point is that natural gas going into, yeah, we are into uh, mid-October just about. Uh, you're looking at uh, down at the bottom there, when is natural gas going to pick up? Because you would think with everything that's going on, uh, natural gas with heating heating oil everything coming into the winter into the winter months that should start to show signs so all i can say is that if look at the numbers and if if natural gas by next wednesday or, or, or yesterday was wednesday, yeah today's thursday so if by this coming wednesday wednesday's close if natural gas is able if it holds the 6 uh 30 Neck, it mustn't go down there. Well, I have to give you the number. So let me just give you the number in the dreaded H pattern. If it holds this continuous contract, if it holds 6.305 uh, on any pullback, even if it goes under but it goes back above, that's going to be a positive. Uh, just in terms of support, if it closes sharply under that level towards six, I don't know, I, I, I don't know when. Uh, natural gas is going to come come really in, into its own in terms of uptrend because now it's in a decided downtrend. So this is the number you're looking at. The 200 period moving average is 6.98. Uh, I'm not really too interested in the 200 period moving average. It's this high that was made on the 6th of October of 7.188. If on any day there is a pop in the next, oh, I'd even give it a, a week, but it, over the next week, if there is a pop, that sees it touch that level and then treat the 9 point, uh, 8 point, uh, give, give you the exact figure, 6.98 6 level as support and then manages to start trading. I don't mean to go for a day or two, but start trading the 7.35 level. That's kind of what you want to see on a very short term basis. Say, hey, maybe there's a bit of a turnaround here and that turnaround could ignite further buying 
But that's what you need to see, and you need to see it fairly soon. Because if you go back to what we were looking at a moment ago, we were looking at, oh, oh, let me just find that again. Question was uh, EQT. I, I know this one so well, and I keep forgetting what the symbol is. Usually I remember the symbol EQT. There it is. Um, it's the same thing. It's a pattern, but it's kind of magnified. It isn't quite the same as natural gas per se, but it has got the spike up and then a pullback. It's holding way better at 42.88. So this, to, to have a comparable move, I want a daily close above 43.83. Uh, now, I'm going to go higher than that. I'm going to go above 40. I make it 44.20. A close about 44.20 any day says you've got now a potential cup formation, and that would make the comparable high of the 6th of October. In this case, it'll be 44.92. Start to trade in the 45s. All of a sudden, this is in play. I do think it's in play just based on the weekly and the monthly chart of EQT, natural gas and hydrocarbon. Um, this is uh, trading at 42.89, down 69 cents today. But I do think it's in play. Um, it's just that it needs to, I don't want to see if it closes under the low of the 11th, that was three days ago, of 41.77. If it closes below that, it says, uh-oh, you're going to have to wait. But that chart pattern is even a little bit better than natural gas. But, of course, you want natural gas to lead the way. So that's what I'm looking at. So in the 46s at any point over the next, what are we doing first? Friday, that's seven sessions. Nah, maybe it's not enough. I'd say but in the next trading, eight, eight or nine trading sessions, that would say, finally, you've got yourself some upside activity. And I'm going to make a note of it because I think this is one that yeah, has the potential uh, to do well, but at least first to get, get over the, the resistances. The next question came in was, um, oh, uh, uh, statement TSM. That's... Um, Taiwan Semiconductor, that's a really nice move, almost filled the gap from three days ago. This is kind of what you want to see when every, oh man, I used to have these things all notated. It must be in a different file. Nah, it doesn't matter. So there's peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. And peak D is right in January, I believe, at 145. Round number high. Wow. 145. Round number high, and that is 1.2022. And now we're trading at 65, having made a low today of 63.32. Oh, gosh, these moves are just unbelievable. And the speed, look, lower lows and lower highs, almost every single made a little peak A once uh, somewhere around June, and then it plunged again. So, yes, this is a good start, but it's only a start because... To really get the semiconductor, so this is a Taiwan semiconductor, obviously, right there in the space at 80 a.m. is 80, um, 80 a.m. A.M. 18, what's the matter with me? Applied materials uh, went from the 160s uh, down to today's low. Let me just get that my system is saying, hey, too much going on, doesn't matter. There, so today's low, oh my goodness, can you believe it? from the 160s to today's low of 71.12? We're trading right now at 74. This is a really good start to a turnaround because it is a plunging. Now, what was I talking about? The volume doesn't seem to me to be there in many of these um, instruments. Uh, let me go to the S&P. Let's go to the SPY for the moment. A spy is trading at 352.76. So I had a trough G. The, you, you remember, um, for a long time, I've been talking about G almost always these days. Just not these days. I'd even say for the past year. I'm almost always writing G slash C because very often it goes to a G. It doesn't immediately turn around, either up or down. But what happens is it makes a little bit of a move against the grain to make a trough or a peak, and then it goes to a D. And that's that's what I'm looking at right here because what happened, it made a peak, a, a trough G by yesterday's slightly higher low, and today it's gone to a D. So there are a lot of things saying, hey, maybe we, we, maybe there will be signs, but I need to see 
something happened. And if you're looking at volume, let me just look at volume. Uh, this so far is not very high volume. 36 million, 8, 6, 4. I never know if these are billions or millions or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. It's the number that I always look at. And that was 92. So we're only not exactly an hour into trading, almost an hour into trading. All right, let's see what happens. Because if there's a, a, a fantastic close today, because the day is young. I mean, this is all what happened this this morning to me. It's just a pity that it... it I did I didn't one Thursday and maybe one Tuesday where there were very serious market turns to the upside. But mostly it's a Friday or a Monday, and this is very unusual. So all I can say is, we've got a break coming up. I want to do a little bit of work to show you something very interesting. Dow's down 242, S&P's down 45, still way off the lows. Well, let's see what happens. I'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So, folks, in a, in a chapter eight methodology, a buy signal that goes to a buy mode should take you to at least a D, fourth highest peak. It can go higher, but that's that's the objective. Well, you went to a D in the C mini one minute chart at about. Uh, 9.50, uh, pulled back, had another, held, held the green nine-period exponential moving average, went straight to that. I mentioned this earlier on. We were right at the 200-period moving average resistance, went to the peak D, squeaked to an E, and then pulled back. So that gets a down arrow right there. That was the one-minute chart. The two-minute chart was at a peak E as well. So now we're going to see, was that just a, a trigger response? And we are still not making uh, at least a decent low that's tradable. Or is this going to be the low that says, hey, whoa, throw the baby well, I, I don't like that expression, throw the baby out with the bathwater. Come on. Throw everything out the window. Um, 
all I can say is that at this particular point, we don't know. The day is young. To, to have a Thursday reversal like this is a little unusual. It can happen, obviously. But everything was there. And let's go back now to the VIX index. And I, let me just put it this way. If the E-mini trading at 35.48 down 39 is able by one, no, I'm going to make it two o'clock. If after two o'clock is trading any better than minus 15, that's going to be a fantastic turnaround. That's really going to help. But then, of course, we've got Friday's jobs numbers. So it's, this, is, this is really tough because we're going against economic data that is absolutely, we see, well, yesterday the market kind of ignored it. Uh, didn't quite ignore it today, did it? So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Tomorrow could be the decider that if there's something that just ameliorates some of the downside tension, there could just be a relief, a, a much better relief rally. So let's go through some things here because I haven't quite finished my uh, preamble. Uh, I, I, Caterpillar has held very well. It's not great. It's down today, 2.78, but it's... It, it is a green candle. Uh, it's had a peak C and it's pulled back from the low in the 160 area and it's popped all the way to the 182. It's now at 176. I'm watching these. These are the deep cyclical. So Caterpillar is saying, look, the monthly chart so far doesn't look as bad as many of the others. Uh, the daily chart's helping a little bit. The weekly chart's still making lower lows and lower highs. But if I put it together with Alcoa, it's also attempting to make some kind of a, at least a tradable bottom here at 39.17, made a, a leg B yesterday, coming off the low of 33.80, what was that again? Uh, 33.55 on the 30th, uh, it's trading at 39.35, so yeah, I mean, six points, that's, you know, 20% gain. Off lows, you get fantastic uh, uh, gains on a percentage basis. So let's just watch some of the deep cyclicals, because if they can also rally, and in fact, if they start to, in a sense, lead, because they're holding well, they don't have to actually lead in price, but they're showing much better uh, technical a technical aspect then some of the uh, for instance if we go to the xlk this xlk look at that i mean that is a horrible chart this is the s&p select tech spider fund to even get it to look uh okay you'd have to see it trading over the 126 level over the the high that was made on that peak a minus that was formed uh, back around about october the uh, fifth or sixth so there's science trading at 140.92 down a dollar 61 so there is ample work to be done uh, in the various sectors let's look at i question came in can i look at ibb well ibb um, on a daily basis and a weekly basis, this arch formation hasn't taken out the left side low. So that's kind of a good sign. That's the IBB NASDAQ Biotech ETF. If you look at the monthly chart with that big arch formation, it says you've got to be careful because that left side low that was, uh, I had shown this as a, let me just do this again. Left side, right side, price, time match, and so far, it just has refused to go back to the to the low that was made back in, I think it was March of 2020, at the low of 92.15. Uh, we've only we've been above 100 on every one of these lows. So so far, this is going sideways and is showing better relative strength than something like the semiconductors or the XLK, anything to do with tech. So this is a, this is impressive in the fact that it hasn't. Um, crumbled. It's it, it's not looking great, but it's looking a lot better than some of the others. Uh, question came in here. Uh, just uh, what's the TBT telling you? Well, the TBT is telling me that's the ultra short Lehman 20 year Treasury bond ETF that yields based on the technicals of the daily are maybe a little bit. Over, overbought, but the stochastic's flat at 86, so that's still holding very well. It's in a G slash C. You got a G slash C in the um, weekly chart, but here the technicals are fabulous. It's a flat stochastic at 91, and the monthly, and that's just saying that no matter what happens, the Fed's desire for an amelioration of the inflationary aspect. And the way that they can do it is to raise yields. Um, I don't think that's going to stop. I just don't see how it can stop. 
other than short term, you know, some kind of pullback. It is really important because the higher the rates go, the more it impacts areas like the HGX, which is the uh, question came in. Could you look at wood and could you look at housing? So the only thing I can do here is go to the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index and say so far this arch formation in the monthly chart has held above the trough D that was made at about 330. 331.20 back in the week of June the 17th. And then it had a good rally and now it's starting to pull back. But look at this gap down uh, in the daily chart. Uh, it hasn't taken out the left side low of uh, September the 27th. Yep, September the 27th of 342.76. The low today is in the 344 area. So it looks to me like it is going to take it out. So that is kind of what the Fed would like to see but just purely in a technical basis, a question came in, can you look at Bank of America? Is this time again to, to go into the Bank of America? Um, it's From what I read, I, I don't do the study myself, but from what I read, Bank of America on a purely uh, intrinsic basis, that is what they do, the books, the everything that we can read and decipher, evidently they have one of the better financials. So in that aspect, a yes, it could be ready for some kind of a bounce. I'm going to be watching this closely. It has taken out the left side low of July. It's trading with a low today of uh, uh, 29, yeah, 2931. It's trading right now at 30.42. Oh, it needs a lot of work to even fill the gap. But it's a good, it's a good way to go to say, let's follow something like Bank of America because the XLF, look at the left side chart, and look at the middle chart with the arch formation. Look at the, the right side chart. Now we're going to go to the XLF. If I type it in the right place, you'll get it. XLF, there it is. Um, XLF has gone to a lower low, both in the daily, the weekly, and the monthly for leg B to the downside. It is just not looking that great. So yes, there could be bounces. My, 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 my guess right now is that if we're playing the long side, you've got to be use less money and maybe be more aggressive. And that's what we've been trying to do. We've been trying to uh, enter into positions like the three times longs, um, just on a near-term trading basis. With very, very little of the portfolio going into it with a nice impact if it's successful. I'll be back in a moment. Now, Dow's 165 down. SP's down. Thank you. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. A question came in uh, from David in, in uh, Framingham, and the question was, what about JETS? JETS is the U.S. Global JETS ETF. It's trading at 15.51, down five, five cents. So um, this is a very difficult one because there are so many things working against it at this particular time, against the airlines, against uh, with fuel prices, with uh, generally with transportation, uh, air transportation, pilots, uh, dearth of pilots. Uh, shouldn't say dearth; it sounds like death. But yeah, the dearth of pilots uh, and crew members. I, that's really the big issue, I think, for a lot of airlines. I know it was at some point with JetBlue, uh, but you know, at the same time. All I would say is this, I would not, at this particular point at 15.50, if the general market suddenly has a, a very, a, just a, a relief rally, this is probably a place that could bounce, but it hasn't got, I don't see it having intermediate term uh, strength until it starts to break above the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, which says at about 16.80, that would be much better. So I don't know if you have a position in it. Sometimes you call because you've already got a position. If, if you've got a position and it's a long position, my thinking right here is that if you if you do have a position, I just would not want to see it crack the low that was made on the uh, 3rd of October of 14.77. Uh, so that to me would absolutely be a stop. But on the long side, it's coming back a little bit now. It's only down 0.2. The market's running. Now the Dow's only 113 down, 33 in the S&P. This is a spectacular. This could be one of those major turnarounds, at least in the short term, especially if tomorrow the jobs number is ignored, whatever it says, and the market says, I'm out of here. I want to get going to the upside. But in the meantime, Jets is the question, and I'd say – I wouldn't have any position. I'm going to look at the IYT, which, of course, is the Border Transportation Index. That made a lower low today, so Jess is holding way better. So in that regard, I would say to you just one thing, that if you are holding jets, I would have a stop in it. I would be much more comfortable if by day's end we're looking at jets. That's the, uh, as I say, U.S. ETF for the airline, American um, Airline Index. If it's trading anywhere close to the high of the day, which is 15.76, no, not good enough. If by the end of the day it takes out 15.76 and actually closes above 15.70, I'd say, hmm, that might be a start if there is an upside follow through in the general market. But as it stands right now, it's just stuck. I don't see the percentage gain that you could get if you're perhaps looking at something that is already showing strength, much better strength on the turnaround potential for today. I hope that helps you. A uh, question came in. Where did it go here? Um, yeah. Could you could you just run some of those uh, stocks that you often look at? Yeah, let's do this. Amazon. Amazon's probably taking a dip today and come, trying to come back. Yeah, that's in a leg. G to the downside. It's an alternate account. G slash C from that instant restart on the downside from the trough D uh, way back in uh, September. So this is, let me just type it in here, G slash C. 
Did it make a round number? Low? Let's look for a round number. No, nope, 103.35 was the low. It's trading at 108.83. Hey, that's a nice comeback early in the day, but that's a nice. I am looking at this and I'm saying, oh boy, this is the way the market's acting right now. It's like this, the, the, the elastic band has been stretched and it's just trying to come back. It's trying to come back. There's still a lot of selling pressure, but I'm, I, I, I kind of like what I see. So uh, Amazon trading, I'm going to put it this way. It's the first time I've done this and I, I might regret it. Question came in from a couple of people. One in particular said, we've been waiting for you for a long time to discuss Amazon. It was in the 135 area, I, I the 133, 135. And I said, you know what? I wouldn't do anything, but if you want to get a real good feeling for Amazon, you could just you could just tiptoe in. And what I mean by tiptoe in is if the if it, if it plunges from you, it still doesn't affect your portfolio in any way. So it's just like a tiptoe in. Now's the first time I'm going to say this would be my first entry into Amazon at 108.71. Today's low is 105.35. Oh, 105.35. And I would make my stop 103. So in at 108, you got a 2% risk, um, about five points at 103. So I'm going to go there officially. This is not a form of subscribers. I haven't done anything with Amazon for subscribers. That's what I'm looking at. So my, oh, I'm looking at the E-mini now, trading at 35.61 uh, and made a new recovery high. This is going to be very interesting. Leg C in the uh, two-minute chart, leg C in the one-minute chart. And now let's just have a look at the, uh, I'm going to go there right now. Yeah, so this is now a leg B. In, a, in, a, in an attempt to get back into this ugly candle. We haven't even got halfway into the candle yet, but this is very, very strong action, at least at 11, uh, at 10.48, 10.48 uh, in the morning, Eastern time on this Thursday. Really, it's just a really good sign that we didn't follow through to the downside. Question came in about the XLE. Now, Here's something that is kind of important for me. The XLE trading at, oh, it was holding the nine period exponential moving average, almost touched the 14, and then it sprang to the upside. Today it's up $1.35 at 81.44. This is exactly the action that I would have liked to have seen. Um, I, I, I thank you for showing it to me, but I would have liked to have seen. Um, yesterday but it's fine that it's today because yesterday I had a higher low than the previous day and uh, today it's actually taken out that that l the high that was made around about the 10th and that's really important so I like it very much so the XLE that is the uh, S&P select energy spider fund nice actually remember the, the inside track a propellant zone held very well in the weekly chart with an H pattern that held the right side much over the much above the left side low and the weekly chart is saying this is good this is really good action yes so the question is what about X, uh, XLE and I'm just saying this is very very good action um, it, it'll be very poor action if at any time in the next uh, going into early next week if it closes under 78 but at this point at 8167 this is really good action next question came in uh, where did it go XLE oh, is that an instant restart uh, in the no, you can't get an instant restart. Mm, let me just show you an instant restart. Let's go to the TBT. I think that's the one. Yeah, here's a perfect example of an instant restart. You, the price you're following makes a peak D. This one right here in the TBT, back with a high of 24th of August at 27.54 in the daily chart, took one, two, three, four, five, six sessions to get to the a higher high. But this one on the uh, September the twenty September the twentieth with a high of thirty point twenty eight, it pulled back for one day and then it made a new recovery high. So immediately you got E slash A, F slash B, and G slash C. That's an instant restart. So the XLE, I'm not sure where, which point you're looking at in the XLE, but no, it has not made. But it has made an island reversal to the upside. Wow, the Dow's now only down 67, s and is down 26. Impressive. I'll be back.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey folks, let me get you three things that are really important right here. You see this one minute chart, you see this 200 period moving average when you were down, when, when you broke it this morning at about 8.35 or 8, yeah, 8.30, about 8.32. Bam, it comes down. And then it got close and it pulled back, went to a peak D, got close, and then it went to a peak E just above it. And then it pulled back, and here you are at peak D. It's trying to use this 200 period moving average as a fulcrum that becomes a springboard to the upside. So far, good action. So Kevin asks, is this a no-brainer time to buy a dip for at least a few week bounce? And I'm going to say the risk, well, of course, you're way off the low. Uh, the, uh, it, I don't know what you're going to be buying. The diamonds are at 291. They were a lot lower earlier on. So I'm going to say, yes, as long as you put in a stop. Put in a stop and just let the market tell you what it's going to do because we need the follow-through Friday and you need the follow-through after the weekend going into Monday. But if you don't think that people were just absolutely throwing their arms up and saying, this is unbelievable, I can't take any more. This morning on that sharp pullback, I think you've got a lot of people out of the market that markets tend to do that and then they take off. And then if you look back and you say, oh my God, I got out here and we're already up there, uh, it, it, that's really what you want. So I'm saying yes, 
but put in the stuff. It's really important. So, uh, and folks, um, just for my subscribers, I might be putting out uh, an update. <clears throat> Probably the very first update that I put out this morning should have been the one, but I might do that. We'll see what happens. If this is going to be a rally, you got time. It's going to be a, a rally that lasts a little while longer than just a couple of days. So the third thing is watch the VIX index. I can't believe that within the weekly chart, after all that's happened, that the volatility index, should be hearing the music any moment now, is inside the inside track repeller zone. So if certainly by Friday, the VIX index starts to slide under, it's at 32.74. If by Friday, we see it under 31, that's going to suggest that yet again, you've got the spiral in the volatility index in a weekly chart that suddenly pulls back and that's going to give the market some gumption and be some attitude to be able to move higher.